would like to add my voice to the congratulations. It's an extremely exciting project, very different from anything we've seen before. And uh, in that connection, I think it would be interesting if you could tell us just a little bit briefly about the origins of the project and, and, the, and the relationship with Jen. Oh, great. Well, maybe I might start and then you all can all jump in. How sure. about that? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, well, thank you. Thank you for celebrating this work of, of the Perma Youth around the world and for accepting our application and and um, and uh, awarding the Perma Youth this, this prize. It's a real honour. Um, I've been living here at Crystal Waters Permaculture Village for hmm, over 20 years now. And Maya's grown up here and um, Eleni has mostly grown up here. Um, I'm a Gen ambassador and I've worked with Max in the early days in the office when he was setting up Genoa and traveled and worked with many of the different eco villages and um, worked with Albert and um, Declan and lots of people around the world. And so my my relationship with Jen has always been there. Um, I, I'm based at Permaculture, at, based at um, Crystal Waters. I run something like called the Permaculture Education Institute. And a lot of young people were offered scholarships to join this. And I remember asking Lulu in particular, like, this is all really, I guess, coming from you, Lulu, because I was asking young people, like, so how are you going in the course? And, and she said, yeah, it's great, but I would so much really love to talk to other young people doing it. And there were people doing it, but not connecting. So we just put out a call and people started to join this Perma Youth Network. And from there, it's just found a voice of its own, found a life of its own, and it's youth led and it ripples out across the globe, connects with people here. Like you see, we've got Somali who's in Kakama refugee settlement, Rolanda who's in Nakavali refugee settlement in Uganda and Bemriki who is um, also come out of the Permaculture Education Institute. And as soon as he started learning there, started teaching, and I think he's taught several hundred Perma youth in uh, Uganda and, and in other places too. So that was kind of the, the birth of it, I think. And uh, from there, like I said, it's just grown. So I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything else to that beginnings. Thank you. Yeah. Anna, do you want to, or Abby? Yeah, no, question? I'll come in and, unless somebody wants to add a little bit about the beginnings. But I'm a bit curious about your team because you're all around the world and, you know, uh, that. So could you tell me a little bit more about your, your team, how it works, and maybe some of the like main kind of strengths and challenges that you've overcome also? Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, um, so, um, Lulu, Eleni, and uh, all of the people here, uh, they're all part of kind of like the um, people that are making, um, you know, leading the different movements in the different areas and, you know, also coming up with different ideas. So, um, you know, we've got hubs from the movement. So, you know, Somali is kind of um, helping and you know leading the Kakama movement and so is Roland in Nakavale and Bemariki in Ramanja and um yeah we've got a hub here on the Sunshine Coast in Australia too so it's kind of a we like to call it a myceliating movement so it's like uh the uh mushroom kind of fungal network so it's self-organizing and um you know kind of organically spreading so we kind of get together every Sunday to talk about different ideas that we want to do and so it's kind of a consistent connection with that and yeah we're all really good friends too it's been a great way to meet other people from around the world and yeah I really enjoy it. Do you want to jump in Lulu maybe? Um, sure uh so i'm in zanzibar and right now i'm doing a little bit of work at like the school that i actually went to the only school that i've ever gone to um and then i started homeschooling and then you know got more into depths of permaculture i also grew up in a permaculture household um but yeah like like maya mentioned uh we come together every sunday and then it's like we give each other feedbacks on the things that we're doing and Sometimes there's a bit of a discussion around certain topics in permaculture. It's actually how we started out the whole group. It was like a bit of a study group uh, idea behind it. So 
within the first few months of Premier Youth Meeting, we always came together and then we spoke about the different principles and the ethics and then um, uh, like just small details of permaculture and then it evolved into a group discussion and Morag was also always there. And, um, as time progressed, we kind of just channeled it out into more of things that we were interested in. Last week, um, one of our uh, members, Chloe, did a really nice presentation on uh, green housing and, you know, just being more regenerative. So it's really, it's a, yeah, it's more of a discussion group on Sundays, but everyone does their own thing in their own little, their own little mycelium pod, kind of. And then people like Somali um, has been participating since he first did permaculture workshop in, in Kakama. And he, he, you can speak for yourself in a minute, but I'll just introduce you. Somali decided that when he learned permaculture that he said, oh, you know, I, I reckon I can spread this further and faster if I sing it, if we do it in song. And so um, we, as well as the weekly meetups, we've been having monthly festivals. Actually, we, we were going to go to the, to the Argentina International Festival and beam out that to the world of young people, but then COVID happened. And so we said, okay, well, we'll just have an expanded festival and every month we'll do our own session. And so we bring in someone to talk to from around the world, bring people, sign up from all over. Sometimes there's presentations about eco villages or natural building or um, animals. Um, and Somali has always made a new song with um, some of the members of his community. And so through this, he's then um, got noticed by some amazing people. Um, one of those being the Grateful Deads Foundation who've, who've offered to actually support him to build a, a studio, a music studio to support young people in that area. So that's happening right now. He's in the middle of building mud bricks and turning it into a permaculture education music center, which is just phenomenal. Um, you know, things just kind of happen and, um, and it is just because we keep sharing and talking and, uh, you know, growing it. So do you want to say a little bit, Somali, about what you're working on at the moment? Uh, so it really was uh, very amazing, amazing because uh, it was uh, the long journey which we started and that was very difficult. But uh, I thank God until we have reached, it is uh, really inspired. And I was just getting inspired uh, during when I get uh, to understand more about permaculture. Because permaculture, I came and realized that uh, it is the main key of opening the, the way life of men, the Kakuma refugee camp, but also outside the Kakuma, which I mean in Africa continent and outside. And I see the only way that we can spread this knowledge to go faster as I have benefit from it, because for now, which I usually get the food and also, but also it helps in terms of uh, uniting people to come together, sharing different idea, aspect of life, which help us as the people who live in Refugees, as you know, refugees, there are people who came from the battle in, a, in other parts to, to other countries. So to see the way that we can spread this knowledge, yeah, then I came up with the idea. Good. So I said uh, we have that something like um, through music. So we have started that journey with with the support of Madam Morag and also uh, co-founder of Palma Youth, Maya and Lulu also. All we just joined together with Madam Sakina. And through that, we have now reached many people and inspire more people. And more people, they have benefits through that. Uh, we, are, we, we are about to complete our building studio and also we have we have started with 10 youth who are liking the musician but for now we have uh, 
couple like 50 then now a musician and to sing about permaculture because we are just educating train them also them and we are all having that uh, spirit of also teaching others outside the camp so we are creating this in every month we create the songs and now we are waiting for the suit to be completed so that we can add more the couple of them will come with which they have been here around here they will come so we are expecting much and uh, we are glad that uh, we are all together and through the knowledge the idea which we are sharing together as palma youth around the world it help us to get more ideas and know what we are going to do in the next steps thank you, thank you. beautiful thank you that's incredible and you know as we celebrate you we also celebrate many of the other projects that applied uh for the hilda jackson award but obviously you stood out somehow to the jury so our curiosity i mean the young people maybe don't have so much experience but i'm curious for what you think you're doing differently right so you've got eco villages you've got youth you've got permaculture refugees you're bringing all of these constellations together um and it, it's obviously incredible and you've already touched on it what makes it special maybe we hear from a voice we haven't heard yet but what do you think that you're doing differently? What makes this project unique from all the other projects that we see? Um, maybe it's not better, but it's something special about it that's done differently than other things you've seen. Do we have a new voice that can answer that one? What's special about Perma Youth? Thanks, Ellen. Oh, I, really, I really feel like um, Perma Youth comes from, from the youth and it's like, it's really what is coming from our heart. It's not like, um, we're following a, a program or we have like a certain aim, but I feel like we as um, a group of pretty well teenagers really want to do um, our own thing, but can integrate it with others. And then we can kind of expand and share and help and just do really amazing things. Cause um, I feel like it's, it's not because we have a certain aim, but it's more like we, we want to incorporate pretty much everything and anything we can. Um, I feel like that's, that's a big thing. I wonder whether Roland wants to add anything, if you can. Hey. Hi. Uh, I'm in um, uh, in my Valley of the performance. Um, since I met Pamayo, it's been like an inspiration to my life because before, yeah, I was studying, doing something with others, but after meeting Pamayo, I feel like living a really new life. Um, I've been traveling, meeting new youth and different parents, speaking from a culture. Um, singing together, we even had some songs that we did. Um, we make food, we dig, we, we, we make friends. It's been like a, a new life to me. Really, I don't know how I can define it now, but what I'm doing nowadays, inspiring others, helping others in the city settlement, it's really something very very big for me because i've been able to help people i've been able to teach them um i've been able to have children learn with them play with them and really it's too much of happiness to me the things that you're doing with so much culture and also for my youth i've made friends I've, yeah i've teach so many things and I'm also looking forward to doing more and more every day and inspiring more people because I've also been inspired by some of I want to give what I have to others. Thank you. Yeah, and if I could just add in there, because I think what what I see is the difference with this is that it that it is an emergent process. You know, like Roland, where it lands with her, is her passion around helping young children access good food 
And so she's really focusing on nutrition with smiling. It's like it lands with him, with his passion, with music. And so it goes from there. There's photographic exhibitions. There's writing thing, uh, writing programs. Roland's done a little book. Um, ben Ricky talks about this being the, one of the biggest ways that he's seen um, peace building it happen. He's been in a refugee settlement for 15 years and he's done all different kinds of things. And so this is something that he's worked with. And from perspective of us here in, um, in Australia as well, it's an opportunity where, um, well, not just in Australia, but in places where there's lots of climate strikes and, um, and young people on the street saying, this is not the future that we want. But then not knowing what to do after the strikes have finished, What's, what next? What do we do as everyday activism? And so I think that's the key thing that's come out too, is this is positive practical activism that you do in your own home, in your own community that looks different wherever you are and that all of these different groups to kind of come together and cross pollinate and, and there's no kind of necessarily like leader. It, it's, a, it's an open discussion space. And I think what's really informed that too is that the, the number of people who you've seen here have, have done host training with people like Nora Bateson, um, Fritjof Capra, um, runs, uh, we, we have a youth program uh, that we host and so they're doing systems thinking. Um, Maya's done SDG training with um, May East. Um, we've used the PERMA, um, the Eco Village cards. Um, we've been into Indigenous communities and so there's this constant learning that's happening and they're learning together, learning together how to be leaders in the world. I'd like to, uh, if I may, make a couple of comments and get your reactions. Um, of course, permaculture has been the initial impulse for this group, right? But I sense that you're broadening the concept qu quite a bit beyond permaculture. We have the example of the music and we have examples of uh, the people helping in the refugee camps. Is, is this perhaps evolving into something more than permaculture into a, a kind of an alternative social medium for young people who want to contribute to transforming the planet. It, it looks like it may be heading in that direction. I wonder, do you have ambitions in that direction to um, expand and bring in more voices, not just focus on permaculture in the longer run? Or do you see it as a more of a staying on, on the narrow path of permaculture? How do you see the future developing? I see Lulu. Yeah, yeah, go yeah. for it. Um, the way that permaculture makes sense to me is, well, the, the three ethics are earth care, people care, and fair share. So to me, permaculture and perma youth is all about sharing and connecting. And for example, um, thinking about broadening the spectrum will still be like within permaculture, at least like yeah, the broad to, concept. Some, to some aspects because permaculture is all about um, growing and sharing and healing. Um, so it's a lot wider than just, you know, of course, permaculture. So with the music and the systems thinking, permaculture has a lot of systems thinking in it and um, or warm data it has a lot of warm data in it. Uh, so connecting all of these things together is like mm -hmm. adding more flavors to the soup of permaculture um, <laughs> and also broadening our minds a lot. Uh, so going, going larger and having more, more little points that all come together um, in the in the web or mycelium of the global perma youth is definitely something that we believe. I think permaculture connected people and it grounds people, um, but we're very much focused on the culture of permaculture. And I think that's where all of these artistic and creative and emergent processes are coming out. And, and whether there's another name that's better for it, I don't know, but this is kind of where it's, it's kind of like the trunk that all these sort of these leaves are growing, the roots are, are going out from. And, um, you know, I think keeping the focus on 
uh, food resilience as well. Somewhere in the core of all of this is so important, particularly with the work with um, refugee communities. You know, that is, that is primary, you know, clean air, clean water, clean food, access to food. Um, and that's, that's kind of the basis. And then wherever you are, there's these different threads that, that emerge. So it's an interesting question, Ross. Then I, I see it. I see it being kind of like the seed that's planted for this beautiful flourishing to take place and whatever that grows into. Um, you know, I, I hear in all the different conversations that uh, these perma youth are really looking at, well, how can we live a one planet way of life? You know, we, we, we want to live in a way, we want to work in a way, we want to share with people ways that we can be doing that. And, and there's no sort of dogma about it being it's not a permaculture dogma. It's a. It's just this the very the most open way that you can enter into the world of permaculture and use that as a platform to to bound off into thinking about you know positive ways forward. And um, also, I think because permaculture has been around for a while and it's been experimented with, and you know, kind of, it, there's a lot of life to it. So. You know, I think it's worth listening to what it has to say, you know, like all the different um, different uh, things like zones and principles and ethics, you know, they've all been experimented with a lot. And I think that uh, you can use them in not just, you know, um, for example, the typical gardening sense, but you can use them for other ways, you know, ways of thinking, you know, I'm really into philosophy. So I like seeing like how you can weave into the principles and ethics in that. So it's kind of applicable in any context, really. And even though it might not look like permaculture, I feel like it's still based from that. And um, one of the things I remember May saying was that, you know, with the SDGs, especially permaculture, you know, SDGs is kind of what you're looking at and permaculture is how to do that. And it's the path to get to those goals. So that's one way of looking at it, I suppose. Good. Super. I just want to, because we have some uh, from Roland and Benrique in the chat, I just want to read them out so we can also really make your voices present. So Roland says that permaculture and perma youth all work in a system that views the world in a way of interconnectedness towards one same goal of making the world a better place for everyone to live in and respond to the global problem. So I guess that's also about this broader focus. And Benrique, thank you for writing also. It's like what permaculture and perma youth does better uh, and why it's special is that we incorporated peace building. Building peace using permaculture approaches uh, is the best way, especially in refugee settlement and IDP with the host communities. Permaculture, which focus on permanent culture, worked uh, here to restore hope to refugees who have no hope uh, for the future or for tomorrow. Thanks, Pamrik, that's super powerful. Um, and I have another question that follows up a bit on, on you know, some of, some of what we spoke about already, but part of your project is also focusing on, focusing on livelihoods creation uh, and particularly in refugee camps. Do you want to tell me a little bit about where that inspiration came from and how that work is? Mm. I'd love for Ben Ricky to be able to speak if he can. Um, do you just want to check to see if you can speak now, Ben Ricky? No, it's not working again. No, I'm sorry. Maybe you can chat, do type in the chat and I'll try and add a little bit and maybe Somali could then add some as well and maybe Roland. Um, so just briefly, what, what Bemriki had noticed was that as he was teaching all these courses that you get to an end of a course and then what? You know, where is the way that like that the young people can be then supported to work together in cooperative teams to set up some kind of collaborative income generation possibility where they could become more resilient in the, to meet the needs that they have and then to be able to share that with other people. So he noticed over the years of working in many different programs that were sponsored by all these different organisations that um, if you give the money individually, it would just dissipate because basic needs needed to be met. Whereas if you gave it to a group to do a group project, then this, there would be an abundance that would emerge and then the individuals could come and borrow from that to start their own individuals, but the central part would keep growing and bringing more abundance. So 
following on from Bemeriki's um, 15 years of experience in refugee settlements directly as a refugee himself and supporting other people, this is where we thought, well, you know, there aren't many opportunities for young people in camps, so let's find ways to support that. So we crowdfund uh, through the Perma Youth and through um, the broader network just generally to find ways to support um, programs that are being run by um, people that are here, Somali, Bemeriki, Roland and, other, and others, so that um, that possibility is there to, to seed new enterprises that young people can then find a way to move forward. So I'm really sorry that you can't speak, Bemeriki, because that's, you've got such a powerful story. I wonder whether, Somali, you wanted to mention, you also drop out a little bit, so if you can maybe keep it short, because your voice was dropping in and out, about livelihoods with with music maybe or or um the programs in kakuma okay thank you again for the chance i think i'm okay so uh about the love hood uh, of uh, the program palma culture program i can call it here in kakuma refugee camp uh, first of all on how we understand uh, about the palma culture uh, Palma culture, it is just a free, a free culture, which we try to learn different cultures, people culture. And uh, through that culture, we come and unite them. As we unite them, we just work together in uniting so that we can help each other through collaborating in what we are doing, through supporting each other, and we live as the community. So in that time, we try to build the peace from each other and also the host, uh, host communities, which are the nation people. So in that, Palma culture, it helped and collaborated. So the music, we came and do the music. It is not because the music, we do them for the entertainment, to entertain people, but we do the music because we want to teach people also people to acquire what we are doing. I'm really okay and feel happy when I'm doing the music because the tools, music, uh, the, the music is just a tool whereby I can spread what I have, what the idea which we have through music and reach more people in within a few, a few minutes to people rather than educating people here uh, just educating 15 example so it's only 15 who benefit but music can benefit more than 15 people so you see that encourage more people and youth also through the youth they get more inspired like here in kakuma youth it is difficult to go and talk to the youth and uh, tell him you have to do palma culture you have to do farming activity it is hard but through the music, we will have to understand that, oh, I can be the musician while I'm doing the Palma culture. It is just connected each other. It is just the same, and you will be able to understand you. So in that terms, we just connected and share, and more people now, they have get to understand that, oh, really what we are doing, it is really inspired. And we like to put our life in Palma culture because Palma culture is just free. It is just a free, free from living hood, free from anything that we are connected with. So what I can say, and now we are just getting the huge support from our community members around the camp, both in Kakuma and Kalubeye. Like next week, I'm going to Kalubeye to go and meet with a group of youth, which we are going to discuss. It is just about to go and share the idea to discuss about the life load, how we live, to exchange those ideas is what I'm going to do there. So, and uh, we are just expecting much. Thank you. Great. Now it sounds like you're all really pollinators and that leads to the next question really well. We asked the public what they liked about this project and they were so impressed with this ripple effect. So you're obviously pollinating, spreading through to each community and that person in that community takes it further. And I'm wondering if you are, and if so, how 
are you tracking these ripple effects or are you able to follow how it reaches out permeates all through different cultures rather than your core group that's a really great question part of what we're um trying to do um at, right now is work with um a, an organization called hilo it's and where we can start to track all these different groups and so that's part of what we want to do now that's that's the point um up until now it's been sort of in a way people are attracted into it and so we hear but as it gets further we kind of know that that's going to happen so there's different layers of involvement too there's some people who just lean in all the time and are always there there's some people who come to the festivals or the music there's some people who just want to listen to the great interviews that happen on the fest. so there's different scales some people just want to do their local gardening for example um, others join in on the writing but we want to connect them all far more um, cohesively what i see um, working incredibly well with this is what ben has been able to do in east africa he as well as helping to start hubs in so many different camps and roland has been part of that too um, traveling with Bemriki to start these hubs they now have an online group that connects all of these all the way up to where Somali is too and they talk all the time through they every week several times using their phones to connect through whatsapp and so they're starting to teach each other share what's going on um, I can see Bemriki's written a whole lot of stuff in the chat too you might want to read out but so so there's this ongoing thread of conversation and I think that relatedness the inter interconnectedness being nourished all the time is one of the key strengths of this group that there are catalysts in each place that are keeping that conversation going and i think something like a hilo will help also to dissipate that even more so that it doesn't necessarily have to rely on key pollinators but the whole group can be communicating it will still need key i think key activators um, and and but they can pop up where it's like it's like what Maya said the myceliating network and then every now and then it's like more compost in different places like little mushrooms will pop up and that's where you know that's what where it'll be and it might be different places at different times and, and then the spores spread from the mushroom and create more of the mycelial network so it's really hard to quantifiably track yeah. but yeah so i think you know this this um the metaphor of myceliating as opposed to ripple like when you throw a ripple in the pond and it ripples out like the myceliating with this sort of it's unseen in a way and then it pops up here here and here and then um that's that process of sporing like it, it just keeps landing and we hear back um but and we just try and keep the conversation open the doors open all the time and lots of possibilities. Um, they do um, newsletters, podcasts, YouTube meetings, festivals, um, writing competitions, photographic competitions, and not even competitions, like co the latest one, which is writing. Um, it's more about creating an anthology of experiences of different people and different words of um, like, it could be. So what is it? It's not poetry this time, is it? It's all different, anything but poetry, is it? Um, You're gonna do a poetry competition next, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. 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 So it's just collecting different people's perspectives on things. And, and uh, excitingly, there is a global perma youth music project that has emerged. And um, we're looking at creating a, a, um, a record and it's gonna be printed on bioplastic and um, like with songs from perma youth around the world. And, and I, can, I can see like the number one, number two, number three, they'll just keep coming. Um, because Rolanda is already doing some songs and, and uh, another student of Bemeriki's Josiane in, uh, in his refugee settlement just sent me a song the other day, which is so beautiful. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, I've got, I've got another question if no one else does. <clears throat> um, Moagna, you're a permaculture educator and I, I can imagine that um it must be a, almost overwhelming to think how many people are in this network and they all need some kind of education especially new people who are coming in who maybe are attracted to the idea but they just don't have the the um the detailed know-how to go about it so i'm wondering what do you how do you handle this do you have a network of teachers also who are linked in uh, that they can and what do you do with new people who are joining up to get them up up, up to the level of the others who are already you know 
perhaps fairly advanced in their understanding? Yeah, it's a really great question. And it's a constantly emerging response that I would give to at different times. What, what's happening right now is that um, these weekly meetings, the, the, those who feel they have something to say or contribute or want to do a presentation can. And so someone will step up and go, oh, I'm passionate about animals and do something about that, or I'm passionate about buildings. And, and so anyone can come along at any time and come in. If, if young people want to be part of the Permaculture Educators Program and come through um, and learn through my online course, they can do that. I have scholarships for young people to do that. Um, ben Riki is offering, um, he's one of the teachers in his community and other camps, and he's teaching hundreds of people. Um, Somali's teacher, Sakina, has taught hundreds of people too. Ronan's stepping up now as a teacher in her community. I know Ellen is talking about teaching in her uh, she wants to go out to schools with a couple of people and teach their um, Lulu's teaching in her local schools. So as as people find their confidence and their voice through this, they'll naturally do that. One thing that we've identified now that we probably need is to develop up an, a specific youth permaculture design course that is not necessarily just permaculture, as you say, but includes the warm data and the systems thinking and the eco village work and all of these things and so what we're designing is that um, we create a curriculum together and whoever has the passion about that can put the content in and then this course is then available for people to access and so you can hear this people can tap into this wherever they are and then um, when you come in to the conversations you you've you've got the background knowledge and it just keeps evolving and emerging like that so the the youtube channel has helped to kind of put up some content the the festivals have shared some great content and so if people want to do that but i think mostly to be honest where most people get the best value out of this is when they're in conversation with one another and so the regular contact between people and having groups that do that is it seems to be where where it really shines Good. Yeah. Nice. Um, I have a question, I think, particularly to, well, most of you, because I was going to say you younger people who are here. Um, but what do you feel like the world really needs to hear about young people today? Like, is there something about, like, in your experience that you think is kind of not seen or not heard uh, in that? So what would you tell the world about? you know, about youth and your experience. Oh, could I, could I, could I say something? Yeah. Um, I feel like a big thing is we're sort of expected to do as our peers are doing. So, you know, in my area, like we get like this real constant pressure to do, to be people and do things. And I feel like if we are allowed to grow and flourish in our own sort of style and way we kind of we discover um who we are and what we want to do and i also feel like we also should be listened to a lot more because um i know a, a lot of i feel like i get written off as a young person you know i haven't i haven't lived all the years to really understand how the world works but you know we're kind of the people stepping up to take up um looking after the human part of this world and helping to you know help uh, help our planet and i also and i really feel like adults well not necessarily adults but um most people really see kids and young people as just as like a real other part of the human race, just like kind of written off. Um, and I really, I really think that needs to change and there needs to be more, like more communication between the, the um, generations. I definitely agree with um, intergenerational communication, like a lot more, because I know there's also a lot of people out there that, you know, with the climate strikes that particularly highlighted that there are people all around all different ages that want to help in some particular way and youth are just the next generation that are going to carry on it so and also there's so much experience so really I think all that we need to do is just start talking and start communicating more and that 
to just start creating spaces where we can do that and can share our stories because me personally I think it would be awesome because I I'm pretty I mean I've grown up in a permaculture eco village but I'm still relatively experienced to say my mom who's been doing it in my life or you guys here too so yeah just communication <laughs> oh, and I just wanted to go off that mic because like a lot of young people are sort of scared to talk to adults because we get like chopped down often when we talk to adults and I I personally love talking to adults because I think young people see things very differently to people who have completely focused their life on one page of the book and we're kind of starting to flip through the other pages for example and I feel like that that's that's a really important thing it's very beautifully said that's that's really interesting the way you articulate that and I feel like a lot of eco villages with older people in them always ask this how do we engage the youth and you've just said it just ask us just invite us to show what we're capable of so I think that's a really important lesson for others to take. And that leads to the next question is like, you're obviously all educators yourself. And I think in permaculture, we say as, as educators, we're also learners, we're students. So I'm curious if there's something while you're teaching that you've learned yourself that maybe you weren't expecting. And, and both from Morag as a, as a more experienced educator, but all of you young people who are educating, is there anything that you learned yourself that maybe surprised you throughout this process? So Lulu put her hand up. Go ahead, Lulu. Um, yeah, so I've been, I'm not a certified teacher, nor am I of legal working age. Um, <laughs> so I hide underneath the little name of uh, helper or assistant at the school that I, that I teach at. So, um, but I take turns with my, I think, my coworker. Um, we're, good, we're good friends. Um, but what I've learned is that the through the through the Perma Youth and through Morag, um, I did a few other courses online, um, and like with the systems thinking and especially the worm data, I learned a lot about psychology and how our mind works. My mother is also very interested in trauma work, so we have like discussions about it and go all nerdy on the internet and talk to people and um, there are all of these pods and where discussions around trauma and psychology and systems thinking mixed with permaculture and um, and all of what I've learned there I don't necessarily I'm not going to say I apply it but it's it's in my thinking so when I when I teach at the school a lot of the the students they're very narrowed in what they 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 know because of the environments that they grew up in it's an international school so i have children from all across the world they're autistic children uh people with adhd some that are completely disabled i um down syndrome so it's like they also sponsor students that are local there's different cultures different religions and i teach from um because the children they're not grouped by by grade, they're grouped by, by age, kind of, but there's also like different um, different grades within the class and different ages within the class. So it's a very it's a very open school in a way. So I teach everything from um, three year olds to fourteen year olds currently, and I'm fifteen. So um, yeah. Uh, and what I noticed with all of these children with all of these different backgrounds is how my thinking has changed so much that I learned so much more from the children. Um, in permaculture, a very big part is patterns because the world and nature functions using patterns as like a structural detail. And the children that I'm working with, they see patterns everywhere. Yesterday, we did an art activity using things from the garden. And the children displayed um, emotions and, and thoughts about the garden using um, like dirt we made paint out of red soil, which has a lot of iron in it. So it rate, it's a very nice bright red color. We used sand instead of glitter um, and leaves to form shapes. And you could really see 
what each child was thinking as it was doing. One did a did a heart for its favorite teacher. Another one drew a family. I know that her parents go through a divorce currently. So it's like you learn a lot from from looking at these students through a more systems thinking point of view. And it's like they're not wired in this mindset of the predominant culture. And it's like I'm learning so much about how these um, how adults that I speak to on a daily basis that I find are very, you know, they have a very set mind and things about how it's doing. It's like dirt is dirty and it has to be clean. Like they have a very set mind and it's like knowing that their children are so open, even though they have their parents, it's like teaching me a lot about how people that grow up within this society, what affects their, their personalities and their, their way of thinking for them to be, um, a person that might not be as open. So that would be like people that don't necessarily do things for the climate or for one another, um, people that have strong psychological problems or depression. So this is all very deep, my apologies. Uh, <laughs> but it's like, it's teaching me a lot about how these things affect people and how they will later be. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without Perm Youth and what I've gotten out of it and the other projects. So that's that's definitely something that I'm learning as I'm growing. Super inspiring, Lulu, thank you. I wonder if Roland or Bemarike or uh, Somali wants to add something also from your perspective. What have you learned that you didn't expect? He's put something in the chat. Um, he said, yes, while teaching permaculture, I learned that peace can't be with only with mediation. I've been working as a peace builder and conflict ambassador and I found permaculture to be the best tool. I also learned that the solution is with the problem. And so he's, uh, he's saying that um, he's talked to me a lot about this before, about how the way that perma youth has brought people together from different cultures, different backgrounds, different ages, being able to come together and work together rather than just come together and talk about a problem, to come together in the conditions where something new can emerge collaboratively. He's, he's um, said that peace building in a refugee settlement through perma youth has been really magic. Um, also, I think follow on from Lulu a bit, I just want to add a very quick thing for me, it's working with perma youth and opening up the possibilities and the potential. Like I, I think I teach completely differently now with people of all ages, like really un, like letting go of trying to control it and really trying to open it up to the possibilities and the potential that is inherent within any, within any group and to, to create the conditions for that to, to unfold and, um, and to, rip, to ripple out or to myceliate rather than trying to go, okay, well, here's a program that you will follow. Mm -hmm. And so my learning has changed and my way of teaching has changed because alongside the programs that we've talked to, I've been learning too. I would come across Nora Bateson's work and go, this is brilliant, let's all do it together. And so we do it together. You know, I learned from Bridget Capra when I was 23 and I, and I, he's now got an online course. So let's do this together. And so, and then they come back as mentors. And so we're learning together. And I, you know, I encourage the adults within the group to also come and learn with them. And there's people who are popping in and out all the time. And I think it's just, yeah, it's really wonderful. Somali's popped places. Does that mean you had your hand up? Yeah. Or Roland was trying to say something? Yeah. Maybe I can offer something. Yeah. Um, in youth and summer culture, I've also learned so, so many things. Um, at first, when I joined summer culture, um, I really didn't know what I was going to do. I really, um, I didn't know what was summer culture really, the real summer culture. But I felt connected. And in my mind, I was thinking permaculture was just gardening, 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 and that's all. Oh. But then I, after being uh, with people, after interacting with the perma youth, after um, having many other learners of the perm, of the permaculture education institute, I've been discovering and learning from different people's perspectives of perm permaculture and discovering also very, very new things about Samakata that I didn't know I was learned about. Like even here at ours in um, the refugee settlement, we have many nationalities, like in Nigeria we have more than nine nationalities. 
and uh, while um, doing permaculture with them, we do learn together, we do teach each other. Like I can go to the Somalis and when I say something about permaculture, together and when we are discussing, they, I love the culture, like they tell me for the Somalis, they, have, um, they even get married at 13 for the girls and that's something I get to know, yes, it's not really good, but just an example that I've been learning and I'm still learning with others through Kamakaze. Fantastic. Um, and we just have one last question to you. You've already touched on, you know, the future and the incredibly like inspiring and very diverse things that you're doing. And I'm curious a little bit about your dream, you know, and it can be your very personal dream, but what is your dream for the future of Perma Youth? If you just let yourself like, you know, project into the future and, and really follow your heart. Oh, I guess, I guess mine's a bit um, personal, but I think it reflects a lot of other people is I was before Pemith, I was like, I felt very, very alone. I had just come out of um, the world of competitive figure skating and there was no one caring about the environment. I just came out of school where it was like a very hostile, not collaborative environment. I returned to homeschooling and I felt so alone because I was like, okay, I have my, I have a few other friends who are in permies. And then when COVID happened, I just kind of, I guess I sort of lost like-minded people. And when I really got into doing perm youth, I just like this whole world just went boop and I could see and I met like online all these like-minded people and I really felt like I wasn't alone. And I just want to keep that happening and more people coming in and sharing and um, meeting other people who have the same kind of dreams and visions and things we can talk about, I think is, like the most magical thing for me. Someone else, you're really welcome to share. Um, I think that, yeah, like just what I would really like to see is just more people, you know, um, kind of seeing, you know, the world through a permaculture lens and trying to, you know, being able and um, having the resources to be able to live a one planet life and, you know, to be able to make a difference in some people's lives or as many people's lives as we can to try and, you know, address the climate crisis, social crisis, mental crisis, you know, the whole crisis of perception, as, you know, Fritjof Kepra says. And I also, um, oh, I had a um I'll get back <laughs> following on oh go ahead Somali yeah thank you uh first of all about the I'm gonna to start about how I learned uh permaculture what I've I've learned in permaculture that uh, permaculture first of all I learn to love each other. That is the first thing that uh, when I enter in the course and uh, come and discover that that is the new thing we have to love. What a sad place to freeze. <laughs> um, I remember what I was going to say. <laughs> um, so not only that but also sharing you know how we do it too so not what like what we do and how we do it because you know with this myceliating method i think that it would be like not method but like way of emergence um i think that you know creating a something like permi through this uh method of uh, emergence can kind of um change people's minds about oh yeah there is another way of doing things and there are people doing it and it is possible to be able to do this and that there is you know and yeah it's that, the possibilities framework yeah. the possibility lens and i think for me too uh, you know the big the big vision is that 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 this will be accessible to so many people and be visible and that it's a 
it's a portal where young people who can who care about what's going on don't need to feel alone or where they can come and find out the 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 language the skills that they need to be able to take the steps to to move forward as they grow up into uh, a way of life so rather than um, being directed in one way they can come and open up and learn you know eco literacy skills and permaculture skills and eco village skills and systems thinking and eco philosophy and this be the portal where they can access that but in a really grounded and practical way and um and that i think uh to also really open up the possibilities where people who are living in australia or in england or america have grow a deep understanding of what's going on with people like somali because not until we understand or see or hear or have a relationship with people like Somali or Bemriki or Roland, that the compassion or the understanding to actually do something different in the world where we have the capacity to do something to help make a difference where, where they are and not just like doing it for them because that's the right thing. Like it's, we can transfer resources and funds and skills and information so they can do it for themselves you know, like the resilience and the creativity and the innovation, like the music project, that's Somali's idea. And it's rippled out and influenced everyone. And it's the thing that makes people's hearts sing. You know, when we have festivals, you know, when, when Somali songs come on, people's hearts sing, you know, it's just this transformation that takes place. So I think it's really about redistribution, deepening understanding, building more relationships, creating cross-cultural, intergenerational and, and multidisciplinary fields of knowledge. In a way, it's kind of like, it's an unschooling. It's a type of university that's not a university. It's a type of high school that's not a high school. It's a place where we learn about the world and how the world can be and dream together and dream globally, but locally simultaneously. I can't hear you, Anna. No, I was muted. Somali, do you want to try to tell us again? Because it was so beautiful what you were saying and you cut out uh, just when you were telling us about learning to love each other. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I was just saying that uh, in permaculture, as I, I entered the course, uh, what I have learned and discovered is that uh, is we have to love each other. In that, I came and discovered it in the permaculture principle where they found um, we have to interact with nature. And uh, all of us, we are the nature because we are fine. We, are, we have just found here in the earth. And uh, also, we have to give the respect to the diversity, whereby we try to educate people. We try to educate ourselves and people also that we have to give respect to the nature all things that are found to the nature, like not cutting the trees, not killing the small animals, not killing the pests. Rather, there is a way that you can do so that uh, those things, they cannot affect your plant, but also you can create a good environment for them also to acquire what they need for them to live. So is what came into my mind and uh, I was like, ah, oh, this is what, what happened this? So I was very interested and in learning too. And also I'm still learning up to now because I'm still in the course, just going on on our permaculture program. So I'm still getting to new things and which inspired me a lot. Uh, and also my dream, my dream, I, uh, I'm just dreaming. I have the big dream about the permaculture because permaculture came and found it is the solution of our problem, which we have. And uh, especially here in the camp, since we have started uh, permaculture, it has helped many people because what we are doing, we have the, the team, which we call them Palmaculture Community Mobilizer, which they go and visit people, try to talk to people to find out what people think about permaculture, but also to cancel them because uh, people, they have many problems. So in that, in by doing that, we try to reduce the number of affected people with the chronic diseases, which they, they was just using the chemicals, in use of the chemicals. So in that way, I see the permaculture 
and I'm dreaming that uh, permaculture it will give us a possible way of killing uh, of abolishing all those chemicals to put them aside so that we can go in a way where that that uh, we can grow without uh, chemicals but also people to live in their respective years which they they can and without having those all chronic diseases and live together that is my dream so it is my dream is palmaculture is the solution of life as we try to make everyone to believe that through the action thank you i'd like to add my dream it's very very short um i think one of the most important things that i have learned within the past one or two years um is i have i i am not able to blame anymore because you cannot blame a person or a thing for what it does um and i have grown to to have a lot more patience and i think that's a that's a really big like gift um to have patience and understanding and not to be able to blame and that would also be my dream for more people to realize that because it's nobody's fault i think that was it for our questions for now and i think we can take also because i know Bemrike, you didn't have such a good connection but we have what you wrote so we can also uh, do something with that or bring that into some of our communications and posts uh, and and that just so that your voice is really also present um and with that i wonder if ross if you want to close or if you have any final remarks or congratulations yeah. yes i um i do <laughs> i'm i'm very impressed I, I think I have a much better feeling now of who you are and what you're doing, and I think it's really great. <clears throat> and I think it's especially appropriate that this initiative came from Australia. I'm sure Bill Mollison would be very proud of what you're doing. <laughs> and uh, the thing is, you have found a very unique formula for creating a very powerful online community, which is quite unique, and, and I think you really deserve a lot of congratulations for doing that and i would just my advice would be you got the right formula just keep doing it just keep doing it you're doing great great to thank meet you all thank you ross thank you so much for supporting the perma youth and it means a lot and it's a real honor and i've known of 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 um, ross and hilda's work for a very long time and um you know since i was young and uh, so it's a real honor to, to be here with the Permu sharing this award. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you. I just want to echo that. And as we share this with the public, I hope that um, people are encouraged to maybe get in touch with you and, and take what they can learn from you and support and let that mycelium go even further. So congratulations again for all your hard work and thank you for sharing your story with us. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Before you go off, I just did notice that Bemriki dropped in a, a YouTube channel link, and maybe that's a way there that you can get some voices, and maybe Somali might be able to email you one of his favorite songs or something that you could weave yeah. into the into the that mix or something like that. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yeah, thank you again. Great. It's really lovely to thank meet you. Thank you so much. Nice to see you all. Bye bye. I'll also say this, and I, I think Maura, you know this already, but we're also launching our first like uh, online Gen PDC, and uh, I think that would also be super cool to bring in like a little case story from you there, um, which is very easy for us to do. I mean, we can add your YouTube channel as a resource, and oh, Roland, we could see your face, how nice, and just that. So we also keep spreading you throughout our network. Um, Wonderful, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well. Thanks, everyone. Pleasure Thanks. to meet you. Enjoy your evening, bye -bye. day, wherever you are. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for joining in. Bye. bye.